to my infant son by thomas hood from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the mother and craig franklin as the father to my infant son thou happy happy elf but stop first let me kiss away that tear thou tiny image of myself my love he's poking peas into his ear thou merry laughing sprite with spirits feather light untouched by sorrow and unsoiled by sin my dear the child is swallowing a pin thou little tricksy puck with antic toys so funnily bestuck light as the singing bird that rings the air the door the door he'll tumble down the stair thou darling of thy sire why jane he'll set his pinafore afire thou imp of mirth and joy in love's dear chain so bright a link thou idol of thy parents drat the boy there goes my ink thou cherub but of earth fit playfellow for fairies by moonlight pale in harmless sport and mirth that dog will bite him if he pulls his tail thou human humming-bee extracting honey from every blossom in the world that blows singing in youth's elysium ever sunny another tumble that's his precious nose thy father's pride and hope he'll break that mirror with that skipping rope with pure heart newly stamped from nature's mint where did he learn that squint thou young domestic dove he'll have that ring off with another shove dear nursling of the hymeneal nest are these torn clothes his best little epitome of man he'll climb upon the table that's his plan touched with the beauteous tints of dawning life he's got a knife thou enviable being no storms no clouds in thy blue sky foreseeing play on play on my elfin john toss the light ball bestride the stick i knew so many cakes would make him sick with fancies buoyant as the thistle-down prompting the face grotesque and antic brisk with many a lamp-like frisk he's got the scissors snipping at your gown thou pretty opening rose go to your mother child and wipe your nose balmy and breathing music like the south he really brings my heart into my mouth bold as the hawk yet gentle as the dove i'll tell you what my love i cannot write unless he's sent above end of poem this recording is in the public domain Letty's Globe by Charles Tennyson Turner From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer as the narrator And Lian Yao as Letty Letty's Globe When Letty had scarce passed her third glad year And her young artless words began to flow one day we gave the child a coloured sphere of the wide earth that she might mark and know by tint and outline all its sea and land she patted all the world old empires peeped between her baby fingers her soft hand was welcome at all frontiers how she leaped and laughed and prattled in her world-wide bliss but when we turned her sweet unlearned eye on our own isle she raised a joyous cry oh yes i see it letty's home is there and while she hid all england with a kiss bright over europe fell her golden hair end of poem this recording is in the public domain Willy Winky by William Miller From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter 
Willy Winky. We Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nicked gown, tearing at the window, crying at the look. Are the wains in their bed? For it's now ten o'clock. Hey Willy Winky, are you coming then? The cat's singing gay thrums to the sleeping hen. The dog's splendid on the floor, and Disney gay at sheep. But here's a walker of laddie that winna fair asleep. Only thing but sleep, ye rog, glowering like the moon, rattling in an iron jug wi' an iron spoon, rumbling, tumbling round about, crawling like a cock, skirling like a kinawot, walking in sleeping folk. Hey, Willy Winky, the wind's in a creel, wumbling half a body's knee like a very eel, rugging at the cat's lug, and ravelling our thrums. Eh, hey, Willy Winky, see, there he comes. Where is the mither that is a story wain, a wee stumpy stoosie that can in his lane, that has a battle eye with sleep before he'll close an eye, but a kiss frae half his rosy lips gives strength anew to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To J. H., four years old, a nursery song by Lee Hunt from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To J. H., four years old, a nursery song. Pien d'amori, pien di canti e pien di fiori. Frugoni. Full of little loves of ours, full of songs and full of flowers ah little ranting johnny forever blithe and bonny and singing nonny nonny with hat just thrown upon ye or whistling like the thrushes with a voice in silver gushes or twisting random posies with daisies weeds and roses and strutting in and out so or dancing all about so with cock-up nose so lightsome and sidelong eyes so brightsome, and cheeks as ripe as apples, and head as rough as dapples, and arms as sunny shining as if their veins stayed wine in, and mouth that smiles so truly, heaven seems to have made it newly. It breaks into such sweetness with merry lipped completeness, ha Jack, ha Gianni mio, as blithe as laughing trio sir richard too you rattler so christened from the tattler my bacchus in his glory my little cor di fiori my tricksome puck my robin who in and out come bobbing as full of feints and frolics as that fibbing rogue autolycus and play the graceless robber on your grave-eyed brother oberon ah dick ah dolce riso how can you can you be so one cannot turn a minute, but mischief, there you in it. A getting at my books, John, with mighty bustling looks, John, or poking at the roses, in midst of which your nose is, or climbing on a table, no matter how unstable, and turning up your quaint eye, and half shut teeth with maned eye. Or else you're off at play, John, just as you'd be all day, John, with head or not, as happens and there you dance and clap hands or on the grass go rolling or plucking flowers or bowling and getting me expenses with losing balls over fences or as the constant trade is are fondled by the ladies with what a young rogue this is reforming him with kisses till suddenly you cry out as if you had an eye out so desperately tearful the sound is really fearful when lo directly after it bubbles into laughter ah rogue and do you know john why tis we love you so john and how it is they let you do what you like and pet you though all who look upon you exclaim ah johnny johnny it is because you please em still more john than you tease em because too when not present the thought of you is pleasant because though such an elf john they think that if yourself john 
had something to condemn too you'd be as kind to them too in short because you're very good-tempered jack and merry and are as quick at giving as easy at receiving and in the midst of pleasure are certain to find leisure to think my boy of ours and bring us lumps of flowers but see the sun shines brightly come put your head on rightly and wheel among the bushes and hear your friends the thrushes and see what flowers the weather has rendered fit together and when we home must jog you shall ride my back you rogue you your hat adorned with fine leaves horse chestnut oak and vine leaves and so with green overhead john shall whistle home to bed john end of poem this recording is in the public domain seven times four maternity by jean inglow from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin seven times four maternity hey ho daisies and buttercups fair yellow daffodils stately and tall when the wind wakes how they rock in the grasses and dance with the cuckoo buds slender and small here's two bonny boys and here's mother's own lasses eager to gather them all hey ho daisies and buttercups mother shall thread them in a daisy chain sing them a song of the pretty hedge sparrow that loved her brown little ones loved them full fain sing heart thou art wide though the house be but narrow sing once and sing it again hey ho daisies and buttercups sweet wagging cowslips they bend and they bow a ship sails afar over warm ocean waters and haply one musing doth stand at her prow o bonny brown sons and o sweet little daughters maybe he thinks on you now hey ho daisies and buttercups fair yellow daffodils stately and tall a sunshiny world full of laughter and leisure and fresh hearts unconscious of sorrow and thrall send down on their pleasures smiles passing its measure god that is over us all end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mother's hope by laman blanchard from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Mother's Hope Is there, when the winds are singing in the happy summertime, When the raptured air is ringing with earth's music heavenward springing, Forest chirp and village chime, Is there, of the sounds that float unsighingly, A single note half so sweet and clear and wild as the laughter of a child? listen and be now delighted morn hath touched her golden strings earth and sky their vows have plighted life and light are reunited amid countless carolings yet delicious as they are there's a sound that's sweeter far one that makes the heart rejoice more than all the human voice organ finer deeper clearer though it be a stranger's tone than the winds or waters dearer, more enchanting to the hearer, for it answereth to his own. But of all its witching words, sweeter than the song of birds, those are the sweetest, bubbling wild through the laughter of a child. Harmonies from time-touched towers, haunted strains from rivulets, hum of bees among the flowers, rustling leaves and silver showers, these ere long the ear forgets but in mine there is a sound ringing on the whole year round heart deep laughter that i heard ere my child could speak a word ah twas heard by ear far purer fondlier formed to catch the strain ear of one whose love is surer hers the mother the endurer of the deepest share of pain hers the deepest bliss to treasure 
Memories of that cry of pleasure, Hers to hoard, a lifetime after, Echoes of that infant laughter. Tis a mother's large affection, Hears with a mysterious sense, Breathings that evade detection, Whisper faint and fine inflection, Thrill in her with power intense. Childhood's honeyed words untaught, Hiveth she in loving thought, Tones that never thence depart, For she listens with her heart. Lamont Blanchard End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bedtime by Francis, Earl of Rosslyn From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Bedtime Tis bedtime. Say your hymn, and bid good night. God bless Mama, Papa, and dear ones all. Your half-shut eyes beneath your eyelids fall. Another minute, you will shut them quite. Yes, I will carry you, put out the light, and tuck you up, although you are so tall. What will you give me, sleepy one, and call my wages if I settle you all right? I laid her golden curls upon my arm. I drew her little feet within my hand. Her rosy palms were joined in trustful bliss. Her heart next mine beat gently, soft and warm. She nestled to me, and, by love's command, paid me my precious wages. Baby's kiss. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Hartley Coleridge, Six Years Old, by William Wordsworth, from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org, by Craig Franklin. To Hartley Coleridge, Six Years Old. O thou whose fancies from afar are brought, who of thy words dost make a mock apparel, and fittest to unutterable thought the breeze like motion and the self born carol thou fairy voyage that dost float in such clear water that thy boat may rather seem to brood on air than on an earthly stream suspended in a stream as clear as the sky where earth and heaven do make one imagery o blessed vision happy child thou art so exquisitely wild i think of thee with many fears for what may be thy lot in future years i thought of times when pain might be thy guest lord of thy house and hospitality and grief uneasy lover never rest but when she sat within the touch of thee o oh, too industrious folly o oh, vain and causeless melancholy nature will either end thee quite or lengthening out thy season of delight preserve for thee by individual right a young lamb's heart among the full-grown flocks what hast thou to do with sorrow or the injuries of to-morrow thou art a dewdrop which the morn brings forth ill fitted to sustain unkindly shocks or to be trailed along the soiling earth a gem that glitters while it lives and no forewarning gives but at the touch of wrongs without a strife slips in a moment out of life end of poem this recording is in the public domain my little girl by samuel minton peck from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao my little girl my little girl is nested within her tiny bed with amber ringlets crested around her dainty head she lies so calm and stilly she breathes so soft and low 
she calls to mind a lily half hidden in the snow a weary little mortal has gone to slumberland the pixies at the portal have caught her by the hand she dreams her broken dolly will soon be mended there that looks so melancholy upon the rocking chair i kiss your wayward tresses my drowsy little queen i know you have caresses from floating forms unseen o oh, angels let me keep her to kiss away my cares this darling little sleeper who has my love and prayers end of poem this recording is in the public domain Little Golden Hair by Mrs. F. Burge Smith From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator Jason in Panama as the grandfather And Lian Yao as Golden Hair Little Golden Hair Golden Hair climbed upon Grandpapa's knee Dear Little Golden Hair, tired was she all the day busy as busy could be up in the morning as soon as twas light out with the birds and butterflies bright skipping about till the coming of night grandpapa toyed with the curls on her head what has my baby been doing he said since she arose with the sun from her bed pity much answered the sweet little one i cannot tell so much things i have done played with my dolly and feeded my bun and i have jumped with my little jump rope and i made out of some water and soap beautiful worlds mamma's castles of hope and i have readed in my picture book and little bella and i went to look for some smooth stones by the side of the brook then i come to home and i eated my tea and i climbed up to my grandpapa's knee i just as tired as tired can be lower and lower the little head pressed until it drooped upon grandpapa's breast dear little golden hair sweet by thy rest we are but children the things that we do are as sports of a babe to the infinite view that sees all our weakness and pities it too god grant that when night overshadows our way and we shall be called to account for our day he shall find us as guileless as golden hairs play and oh when aweary may we be so blest as to sink like the innocent child to our rest and feel ourselves clasped to the infinite breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain the unfinished prayer by anonymous from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the mother and lian yao as the daughter the unfinished prayer now i lay repeat it darling lay me lisped the tiny lips of my daughter kneeling bending over her folded fingertips down to sleep to sleep she murmured and the curly head bent low i pray the lord i gently added you can say it all i know pray the lord the sound came faintly fainter still my soul to keep then the tired head fairly nodded and the child was fast asleep but the dewy eyes half opened when i clasped her to my breast and the dear voice softly whispered mamma god knows all the rest oh the trusting sweet confiding of the child heart would that i thus might trust my heavenly father he who hears my feeblest cry end of poem this recording is in the public domain Cuddle Dune by Alexander Anderson from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the mother, Jason in Panama as Jamie, Thomas Peter as Rab, 
and Craig Franklin as John the Father. Cuddle Doon The Bairnies cuddle doon at nicht, with muckle fort and din. Oh, try and sleep, ye wankriff rogues, your father's coming in. They never heed a word I speak, I try to give a frown. But I a hap em up and cry, oh, Bairnies, cuddle doon. We Jamie, with the curly head, he aye sleeps next the wall, bangs up and cries, I want a piece. The rascal starts em all, I rin and fetch em pieces, strings, they stop a wee the sound. Then draw the blankets up and cry, No, weenies, cuddle down. But ere five minutes gang, wee rab cries out for neath the clays. Me there, Mac Tam get old ants, he's kittling with his taste. The mischief's in that tam for tricks, he'd bother half the tone. But ay I hap em up and cry, Oh, bairnies, cuddle down. At length they hear their father's feet. And as he sticks the door, they turn their faces to the wall, while Tam pretends to snore. Hey, are the weans been good? He asks, as he pits off his shoon. The bairnies, John, are in their beds, and lang since cuddled doon. And just afore we bed ourselves, we look at our wee lambs. Tam has his arm round wee Rab's neck, and Rab his arm round Tam's. I lift wee Jamie up the bed. And as I strike each croon, I whisper till my heart fills up. Ho, oh, bairnies, cuddle doon. The bairnies cuddle doon at nicht, with mirth that's dear to me. But soon the big walls, cock and care, will quaten down their glee. Yet, come what will to ilk arm, may he who rules a boon, I whisper, though their pose be bald, O oh, bairnies, cuddle doon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Witch in the Glass by Sarah M. B. Piat From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator And Anusha Ayer as the girl the witch in the glass my mother says i must not pass too near that glass she is afraid that i will see a little witch that looks like me with a red red mouth to whisper low the very thing i should not know alack for all your mother's care a bird of the air a wistful wind or i suppose sent by some hapless boy a rose with breath too sweet will whisper low the very thing you should not know end of poem this recording is in the public domain small and early by tudor jenks from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as Papa and Anusha Ayer as Dorothy Small and Early When Dorothy and I took tea, we sat upon the floor. No matter how much tea I drank, she always gave me more. Our table was the scarlet box in which her tea-set came. Our guests, an armless one-eyed doll, a wooden horse gone lame she poured out nothing very fast the teapot tipped on high and in the bowl found sugar lumps unseen by my dull eye she added rich pretended cream it seemed a wilful waste for though she overflowed the cup it did not change the taste she asked take milk or sugar and though i answered no she put them in and told me that i must take it so she'd say another cup papa and i no thank you ma'am but then i had to take it her courtesy was sham still being neither green nor black nor english breakfast tea it did not give her guest the nerves whatever those may be though often i upset my cup she only minded when i would mistake the empty cups 
for those she'd filled again she tasted my cup gingerly for fear i'd burn my tongue indeed she really hurt my pride she made me feel so young i must have drunk some two score cups and dorothy sixteen allowing only needful time to pour them in between we stirred with massive pewter spoons and sipped in courtly ease with all the ceremony of the stately japanese at length she put the cups away good night papa she said and i went to a real tea and dorothy to bed end of poem this recording is in the public domain seven times one by jean ingelow from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer seven times one there's no dew left on the daisies and clover there's no rain left in heaven i've said my seven times over and over seven times one are seven i'm old so old i can write a letter my birthday lessons are done the lambs play always they know no better they are only one times one. Oh moon in the night i have seen you sailing and shining so round and low you were bright ah bright but your light is failing you are nothing now but a bow you moon have you done something wrong in heaven that god has hidden your face i hope if you have you will soon be forgiven and shine again in your place o oh, velvet bee you're a dusty fellow you've powdered your legs with gold o oh, brave marsh merry buds rich and yellow give me your money to hold o oh, columbine open your folded wrapper where two twin turtle doves dwell o oh, cuckoo pint told me the purple clapper that hangs in your clear green bell and show me your nest with the young ones in it i will not steal them away i am old you may trust me linnet linnet i am seven times one today end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lost air by thomas hood from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the narrator and sonia as the woman the lost air oh where and oh where is my bonnie laddie gone old song one day as i was going by that part of holborn christened high i heard a loud and sudden cry that chilled my very blood and lo from out a dirty alley where pigs and irish want to rally i saw a crazy woman sally bedaubed with grease and mud she turned her east she turned her west staring like pythoness possessed with streaming hair and heaving breast as one stark mad with grief this way and that she wildly ran jostling with woman and with man her right hand held a frying pan the left a lump of beef at last her frenzy seemed to reach a point just capable of speech and with a tone almost a screech as wild as ocean birds or female ranter moved to preach she gave her sorrow words oh lord oh dear my heart will break i shall go stick stark staring wild has ever one seen anything about the streets like a crying lost-looking child lark help me i don't know where to look or to run if i only knew which way a child as is lost about london streets and especially seven dials is a needle in a bottle of hay i am all in a quiver 
get out of my sight do you wretch you little kitty mcnab you promised to have half an eye to him you know you did you dirty deceitful young drab the last time as ever i see him poor thing was with my own blessed motherly eyes sitting as good as gold in the gutter a playing at making little dirt pies i wonder he left the court where he was better off than all the other young boys with two bricks an old shoe nine oyster shells and a dead kitten by way of toys when his father comes home and he always comes home as sure as ever the clock strikes one he'll be rampant he will at his child being lost and the beef and the ingons not done la bless you good folks mind your own concerns and don't be making a mob in the street oh sergeant mcfarlane you have not come across my poor little boy have you in your beat do good people move on don't stand staring at me like a parcel of stupid stuck pigs saints forbid but he's perhaps been inviggled away up a court for the sake of his clothes by the prigs he'd a very good jacket for certain for i bought it myself for a shilling one day in rag fair and his trousers considering not very much patched and red plush they was once his father's best pair his shirt it's very lucky i'd got washing in the tub or that might have gone with the rest but he'd got on a very good pinafore with only two slits and a burn on the breast he'd a goodish sort of hat if the crown was sewed in and not quite so much jagged at the brim with one shoe on and the other shoe is a boot and not a fit and you'll know by that if it's him except being so well dressed my mind would misgive some old beggar woman in want of an orphan had borrowed the child to go a begging with but i'd rather see him laid out in his coffin do good people move on such a rebel of boys i'll break every bone of them i come near go home you're spilling the porter go home tommy jones go along home with your beer this day is the sorrowfullest day of my life ever since my name was betty morgan them vile savoyards they lost him once before all along of following a monkey and an organ oh my billy my head will turn right round if he's got kidnapped with them italians they'll make him a plaster parish image boy they will the outlandish tattered amalians billy where are you billy i'm as hoarse as a crow with screaming for ye ye young sorrow and shan't have half a voice no more i shan't for crying fresh herrings to-morrow oh billy you're bursting my heart in two and my life would be of no more valley if i'm to see other folks darlings and none of mine playing like angels in our alley and what shall i do but cry out my eyes when i looks at the old three-legged chair as billy used to make coach and horses of and there ain't no billy there i would run all the wide world over to find him if i only knowed where to run little murphy now i remember was once lost for a month through stealing a penny bun the lord forbid of any child of mine i think it would kill me really to find my billy holding up his little innocent hand at the old bailey for though i say it as oughtn't yet i will say you may search for miles and mileses and not find one better brought up and more pretty behaved from one end to the other of st giles's and if i called him a beauty it's no lie but only as a mother ought to speak you never set eyes on a more handsomer face only it hasn't been washed for a week as for hair though it's red it's the most nicest hair when i've time to just show it the comb i'll owe him five pounds and a blessing besides as will bring him safe and sound home he's blue eyes and not to be called a squint though a little cast he's certainly got and his nose is still a good un though the bridge is broke by his falling on a pewter pint pot he's got the most elegant wide mouth in the world and very large teeth for his age and quite as fit as mrs murdochson's child to play cupid on the drury lane stage and then he has got such dear winning ways but oh i never never shall see him no more oh dear to think of losing him just after nussing him back from death's door only the very last month when the wind falls hang em was at twenty a penny 
and the threepence he'd got by grottoing was spent in plums and sixty for a child is too many and the cholera man came and whitewashed us all and dread him made a seize of our hog it's no use to send the crier to cry him about he's such a blundering drunken old dog the last time he was fetched to find a lost child he was guzzling with his bell at the crown and went and cried a boy instead of a girl for a distracted mother and father about town billy where are you billy i say come billy come home to your best of mothers i am scared when i think of them cabarolis they drive so they run over their own sisters and brothers or maybe he's stole by some chimney-sweeping wretch to stick fast in narrow flues and what not and be poked up behind with a picked pointed pole when the suit has catched and the chimney's red hot oh i'd give the whole wide world if the world was mine to clap my two longing eyes on his face for he's my darlin of darlins and if he don't soon come back you'll see me drop stone dead on the place i only wish i'd got him safe in these two motherly arms and wouldn't i hug him and kiss him lark i never knew what a precious he was but a child don't not feel like a child till you miss him why there he is punch and judy hunting the young wretch it's that billy as sudden as sin but let me get him home with a good grip of his hair and i'm blessed if he shall have a whole bone in his skin end of poem this recording is in the public domain the gambols of children by george darley from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama the gambols of children down in the dimpled greensward dancing bursts a flaxen-headed bevy bud-lipped boys and girls advancing love's irregular little levy rows of liquid eyes in laughter how they glimmer how they quiver sparkling one another after like bright ripples on a river tipsy band of rubious faces flushed with joy's ethereal spirit make your mocks and sly grimaces at love's self and do not fear it george darley end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Child in the Garden by Henry Van Dyke From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator And Thomas Peter as the child The Child in the Garden When to the garden of untroubled thought I came of late and saw the open door And wished again to enter and explore The sweet wild ways with stainless bloom inwrought and bowers of innocence with beauty fraught it seemed some purer voice must speak before i dared to tread that garden loved of yore that eden lost unknown and found unsought then just within the gate i saw a child a stranger child yet to my heart most dear who held his hands to me and softly smiled with eyes that knew no shade of sin or fear come in he said and play a while with me i am the little child you used to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain a portrait by elizabeth barrett browning from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by anusha Ayya. a portrait one name is elizabeth ben johnson i will paint her as i see her ten times have the lilies blown since she looked upon the sun and her face is lily clear lily-shaped and dropped in duty 
to the law of its own beauty oval cheeks and coloured faintly which a trail of golden hair keeps from fading off to air and a forehead fair and saintly which two blue eyes undershine like meek prayers before a shrine face and figure of a child though too calm you think and tender for the childhood you would lend her yet child simple undefiled frank obedient waiting still on the turnings of your will moving light as all your things as young birds or early wheat when the wind blows over it only free from flutterings of loud mirth that scorneth measure taking love for her chief pleasure choosing pleasures for the rest which come softly just as she when she nestles at your knee quiet talk she liketh best in a bower of gentle looks watering flowers or reading books and her voice it murmurs lowly as a silver stream may run which yet feels you feel the sun and her smile it seems half holy as if drawn from thoughts more far than our common jestings are and if any poet knew her he would sing of her with falls used in lovely madrigals and if any painter drew her he would paint her unaware with a halo round the hair and if reader read the poem he would whisper you have done a consecrated little una and a dreamer did you show him that same picture would exclaim tis my angel with a name and a stranger when he sees her in the street even smileth stilly just as you would at a lily and all voices that address her soften sleek in every word as if speaking to a bird and all fancies yearn to cover the hard earth whereon she passes with the thymy scented grasses and all hearts do pray god love her ay and always in good sooth we may all be sure he doth end of poem this recording is in the public domain To a Child During Sickness by Lee Hunt From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia To a Child During Sickness Sleep breathes at last from out thee, my little patient boy, And balmy rest about thee, smooths off the day's annoy. I sit me down and think of all thy winning ways, yet almost wish with sudden shrink that i had less to praise thy sidelong pillowed meekness thy thanks to all that aid thy heart in pain and weakness of fancied faults afraid the little trembling hand that wipes thy quiet tears these these are things that may demand dread memories for years sorrows i've had severe ones i will not think of now and calmly midst my dear ones have wasted with dry brow but when thy fingers press and pat my stooping head i cannot bear the gentleness the tears are in their bed ah first-born of thy mother when life and hope were new kind playmate of thy brother thy sister father too my light wherever i go my bird when prison bound my hand in hand companion no my prayers shall hold thee round to say he has departed his voice his face is gone to feel impatient hearted yet feel we must bear on ah i could not endure to whisper of such woe unless i felt this sleep ensure that it will not be so yes 
still he's fixed and sleeping this silence too the while its very hush and creeping seem whispering us a smile something divine and dim seems going by one's ear like parting wings of cherubim who say we finished here end of poem this recording is in the public domain baby bell by thomas bailey aldrich from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Baby Bell One Have you not heard the poets tell How came the dainty Baby Bell Into this world of ours? The gates of heaven were left ajar, With folded hands and dreamy eyes Wandering out of paradise. She saw this planet, like a star, Hung in the glistening depths of even, Its bridges running to and fro, o'er which the white-winged angels go bearing the holy dead to heaven she touched a bridge of flowers those feet so light they did not bend the bells of the celestial asphodels they fell like dew upon the flowers then all the air grew strangely sweet and thus came dainty baby bell into this world of ours two she came and brought delicious may the swallows built beneath the caves like sunlight in and out the leaves the robins went the livelong day the lily swung its noiseless bell and on the porch the trembling vine held out its cups of fairy wine how tenderly the twilights fell oh earth was full of singing birds and opening springtide flowers when the dainty baby bell came to this world of ours Three. Oh, baby, dainty baby bell, how fair she grew from day to day! What woman nature filled her eyes, what poetry within them lay! Those deep and tender twilight eyes, so full of meaning, pure and bright, as if she yet stood in the light of those oped gates of paradise. And so we loved her more and more. Ah, oh, never in our hearts before was love so lovely born! We felt we had a link between this real world and that unseen, the land beyond the morn. And for the love of those dear eyes, for love of her whom God led forth, the mother's being ceased on earth when baby came from paradise. For love of him who smote our lives and broke the cords of joy and pain, we said, Dear Christ, our hearts bowed down like violets after rain. For and now the orchards, which were white and pink with blossoms when she came, were rich in autumn's mellow prime. The clustered apples burnt like flame, the folded chestnut burst its shell, the grapes hung purpling range on range, and time wrought just as rich a change in little baby bell. Her lissome form more perfect grew, and in her features we could trace, in softened curves, her mother's face. Her angel nature ripened too. We thought her lovely when she came. But she was holy, saintly now. Around her pale, angelic brow we saw a slender ring of flame. 5. God's hand had taken away the seal that held the portals of her speech, and oft she said a few strange words whose meaning lay beyond our reach. She never was a child to us. We never held her being's key. We could not teach her holy things, who was Christ's self in purity. 6. It came upon us by degrees. We saw its shadow ere it fell, the knowledge that our God had sent his messenger for baby bell. We shuddered with unlanguaged pain, and all our hopes were changed to fears, and all our thoughts ran into tears like sunshine into rain. We cried aloud in our belief, Oh, smite us gently, gently, God! Teach us to bend and kiss the rod, and perfect grow through grief. Ah, oh, how he loved her, God can tell. Her heart was folded deep in ours. Our hearts are broken, baby bell. At last he came, the messenger, 
the messenger from unseen lands and what did dainty baby bell she only crossed her little hands she only looked more meek and fair we parted back her silken hair we wove the roses round her brow white buds the summer's drifted snow wrapped her from head to foot in flowers and thus went dainty baby bell out of this world of ours end of poem this recording is in the public domain Are We White Rose by Gerald Massey From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Are We White Rose All in our marriage garden grew, smiling up to God, A bonnier flower than ever sucked the green warmth of the sod. Oh, beautiful, unfathomably, its little life unfurled, and crown of all things was our wee white rose of all the world. From out a balmy bosom our bud of beauty grew. It fed on smiles for sunshine, on tears for daintier dew. I nestling warm and tenderly, our leaves of love were curled, so close and close about our wee white rose of all the world. With mystical faint fragrance our house of life she filled, Revealed each hour some fairy tower where winged hopes might build. We saw, though none like us might see, such precious promise pearled upon the petals of our wee white rose of all the world. But evermore the halo of angel light increased, like the mystery of moonlight that folds some fairy feast. Snow white, snow soft, snow silently. Our darling bud upcurled, and dropped i' the grave, God's lap, our wee white rose of all the world. Our rose was but in blossom, our life was but in spring, when down the solemn midnight we heard the spirits sing. Another bud of infancy, with holy dews impearled, and in their hands they bore our wee white rose of all the world. You scarce could think so small a thing Could leave a loss so large, Her little light such shadow fling From dawn to sunset's march. In other springs our life may be In bannered bloom unfurled, But never, never match Our wee white rose of all the world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Baby's Shoes by William Cox Bennett From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Baby's Shoes Oh, those little, those little blue shoes! Those shoes that no little feet use! Oh, the price were high that those shoes would buy, Those little blue unused shoes! For they hold the small shape of feet that no more their mother's eyes meet, that by God's good will years since grew still, and ceased from their totter so sweet. And oh, since that baby slept so hushed, how the mother has kept with a tearful pleasure that little dear treasure, and o'er them thought and wept. For they mind her forevermore of a patter along the floor, And blue eyes she sees look up from her knees With the look that in life they wore. As they lie before her there, There babbles from chair to chair A little sweet face that's a gleam in the place With its little gold curls of hair. Then, oh, wonder not that her heart From all else would rather part than those tiny blue shoes that no little feet use, and whose sight makes such fond tears start. William Cox Bennett End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Baby Zalma's Christmas Carol by Augustus Julian Requier From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 
Home and Friendship, Part One. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Baby Zalma's Christmas Carol. A lighter scarf of richer fold, the morning flushed upon our sight, and evening trimmed her lamps of gold from deeper springs of purer light, and softer drips bedewed the lea, and whiter blossoms veiled the tree and bluer waves danced on the sea when baby zalma came to be the day before a bird had sung strange greetings on the roof and flown and night's immaculate priestess flung a diamond from her parted zone upon the crib beside the bed whereunto as the doctor said a king or queen would soon be led by some sweet aerial overhead ere yet the sun had crossed the line when we at Aries double bars behold him tempest beaten shine in stormy libra's triple stars what time the hillsides shake with corn and boughs of fruitage laugh unshorn and cheery echoes wake the morn to gales of fragrance harvest born in storied spots of vernal flame and breezy realms of tossing shade the tripping elves tumultuous came to join the fairy cavalcade from blushing chambers of the rose and bowers the lilies buds enclose and nooks and dells of deep repose where human sandal never goes the rabble poured its motley tide some upon airy chariots rode by cupids showered from side to side and some the dragonfly bestrode while troops of virgins left and right like microscopic trails of light the sweeping pageant made as bright as beams a rainbow in its flight it passed the bloom of purple plums was rippled by trumpets rallying long o'er beds of pinks and dwarfish drums struck all the insect world to song the milkmaid caught the low refrain the ploughman answered to her strain and every wobbler of the plain the ringing chorus chirped again beneath the sunset's faded arch it formed and filed within our porch with not a ray to guide its march except the twilight's silver torch and thus she came from clouds above with spirits of the glen and grove a flower of grace a cooing dove a shrine of prayer and star of love a queen of hearts her mighty chains are beads of coral round her strung and ribbon diademed she reigns commanding in an unknown tongue the kitten spies her cunning ways the patient cur romps in her plays and glimpses of her earlier days are seen in picture books of fays to fondle all things doth she choose and when she gets what someone sends a trifling gift of tiny shoes she kisses both as loving friends for in her eyes this orb of care whose hopes are heaps of frosted hair is but a garland trim and fair of cherubs twining in the air oh from a soul suffused with tears of trust thou mayst be spared the thorn which it has felt in other years across the morn our lord was born i waft thee blessings at thy side may his invisible seraphs glide and tell thee still whate'er betide for thee for thine for all he died end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the death of an infant by dirk smits translated from the dutch by h s van dyke from the world's best poetry volume one Home and Friendship, Part One. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. On the Death of an Infant. A host of angels flying through cloudless skies impelled upon the earth beheld a pearl of beauty lying worthy to glitter bright in heaven's vast hall of light. They saw with glances tender an infant newly born or whom life's earliest morn just cast its opening splendour virtue it could not know nor vice nor joy 
nor woe the blessed angelic legion greeted its birth above and came with looks of love from heaven's enchanting region bending their winged way to where the infant lay they spread their pinions o'er it that little pearl which shone with lustre all its own and then on high they bore it where glory has its birth but left the shell on earth end of poem this recording is in the public domain She Came and Went by James Russell Lowell From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama She Came and Went As a twig trembles, which a bird lights on to sing, Then leaves unbent, So is my memory thrilled and stirred, I only know she came and went as clasps some lake by gusts unriven the blue dome's measureless content so my soul held that moment's heaven i only know she came and went as at one bound our swift spring heaps the orchards full of bloom and scent so clove her may my wintry sleeps i only know she came and went an angel stood and met my gaze through the low doorway of my tent the tent is struck the vision stays i only know she came and went oh when the room grows slowly dim and when the oil is nearly spent one gush of light these eyes will brim only to think she came and went james russell lowell end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Three Years She Grew by William Wordsworth From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator And Anusha Ayer as nature Three Years She Grew three years she grew in sun and shower then nature said a lovelier flower on earth was never sown this child i to myself will take she shall be mine and i will make a lady of my own myself will to my darling be both law and impulse and with me the girl in rock and plain in earth and heaven in glade and bower shall feel an overseeing power to kindle or restrain she shall be sportive as the fawn that wild with glee across the lawn or up the mountain springs and hers shall be the breathing balm and hers the silence and the calm of mute insensate things the floating clouds their state shall lend to her for her the willow bend nor shall she fail to see e'en in the motions of the storm grace that shall mould the maiden's form by silent sympathy the stars of midnight shall be dear to her and she shall lean her ear in many a secret place where rivulets dance their wayward round and beauty born of murmuring sound shall pass into her face and vital feelings of delight shall rear her form to stately height her virgin bosom swell such thoughts to lucy i will give while she and i together live here in this happy dell thus nature spake the work was done how soon my lucy's race was run she died and left to me this heath this calm and quiet scene the memory of what has been and never more will be end of poem this recording is in the public domain we are seven by william wordsworth from the world's best poetry volume 1 home and friendship part 1 read for librivox.org 
by Thomas Peter as the man, and Lian Yao as the girl. We are seven. A simple child, that lightly draws its breath, and feels its life in every limb. What should it know of death? I met a little cottage girl. She was eight years old, she said. Her hair was thick with many a curl that clustered round her head. She had a rustic woodland air, and she was wildly clad. Her eyes were fair and very fair. Her beauty made me glad. Sisters and brothers, little maid, how many may you be? How many? Seven in all, she said, and wondering looked at me. And where are they? I pray you tell, she answered. Seven are we, and two of us at Conway dwell, and two are gone to sea. Two of us in the churchyard lie, my sister and my brother, and in the churchyard cottage I dwell near them with my mother. You say that two at Conway dwell, and two are gone to sea, yet ye are seven. I pray you tell, sweet maid, how this may be. Then did the little maid reply, Seven boys and girls are we. Two of us in the churchyard lie beneath the churchyard tree. You run about, my little maid, your limbs they are alive. If two are in the churchyard laid, then ye are only five. Their graves are green, they may be seen, the little maid replied. Twelve steps or more from my mother's door, and they are side by side. My stockings there I often knit, my kerchief there I hem, and there upon the ground I sit and sing a song to them. And often after sunset, sir, when it is light and fair, I take my little porringer and eat my supper there. The first that died was Sister Jane. In bed she moaning lay, till God released her of her pain, and then she went away. So in the churchyard she was laid, and when the grass was dry, together round her grave we played, my brother John and I. And when the ground was white with snow, and I could run and slide, my brother John was forced to go, and he lies by her side. How many are you then, said I, if they are two in heaven? Quick was the little maid's reply. Oh, master, we are seven. But they are dead, those two are dead, their spirits are in heaven. Twas throwing words away, for still the little maid would have her will, and said, Nay. We are seven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Boyhood by Washington Alston From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Boyhood Ah, then how sweetly closed those crowded days. The minutes parted one by one like rays That fade upon a summer's eve. But oh, what charm or magic numbers Can give me back the gentle slumbers Those weary, happy days did leave, When by my bed I saw my mother kneel, And with her blessing took her nightly kiss. Whatever time destroys, he cannot this. E'en now, that nameless kiss I feel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pictures of Memory by Alice Carey From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Pictures of Memory Among the beautiful pictures that hang on memory's wall Is one of a dim old forest that seemeth best of all. Not for its gnarled oaks olden, dark with the mistletoe, Not for the violets golden that sprinkle the vale below not for the milk-white lilies that lean from the fragrant ledge coquetting all day with the sunbeams and stealing their golden edge not for the vines on the upland where the bright red berries rest nor the pinks nor the pale sweet cowslip 
it seemeth to me the best i once had a little brother with eyes that were dark and deep in the lap of that old dim forest he lieth in peace asleep light as the down of the thistle free as the winds that blow we roved there the beautiful summers the summers of long ago but his feet on the hills grew weary and one of the autumn eves i made for my little brother a bed of the yellow leaves sweetly his pale arms folded my neck in a meek embrace as the light of immortal beauty silently covered his face and when the arrows of sunset lodged in the treetops bright he fell in his saint-like beauty asleep by the gates of light therefore of all the pictures that hang on memory's wall the one of the dim old forest seemeth the best of all end of poem this recording is in the public domain the motherless bairn by william tom from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the Mithilus Bairn. An Inverary correspondent writes, Tom gave me the following narrative as the origin of the Mithilus Bairn. I quote his own words. When I was a living in Aberdeen, I was limping round the house to my garret when I heard the greeting of a wean. A lassie was thumping a bairn when out came a big dame bellowing, Ye yeah, hussy! Will you lick a motherless bairn? I hobbled up the stair and wrote the song of full sleeping. When I read the burnies, I hushed to the hymn by auntie or cousin or freaky grandame. Was stands last and lonely, and nobody caring, tis the pure dighted loony, the motherless bairn. The motherless bairn gangs to his lane bed. Nain covers his cold back, or oh, haps his bare head. His wee hackit heelies are hard as the airn, and lightless the lair of the mitherless ben. Aneath his cold brow, seeking dreams hover there, a hands that won't kindly to came his dark hair. But morning brings clutches a reckless and stern, that low near the locks or the motherless bairn. Yon sister that sang o oh, his safely rocked bed now rests in the mools where her mammy is laid. The father toils there their wee bannock to earn, and kins na the rangs o oh, his motherless bairn. His spirit that passed in yon hour o' his birth still watches his wearisome wanderings on earth, recording in heaven the blessings they earn wha could he deal with the mitherless bairn o oh, speak him na hastily he trembles the while he bends to your bidding and blisses your smile in their dark hour of anguish the heartless shall learn that god deals the blow for the mitherless bairn end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Mother's Picture by William Cowper From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia My Mother's Picture, Out of Norfolk, The Gift of My Cousin, Anne Bodham Oh, that those lips had language! Life has passed with me but roughly since I heard thee last. Those lips are thine. Thy own sweet smile I see the same that oft in childhood solaced me voice only fails else how distinct they say grieve not my child chase all thy fears away the meek intelligence of those dear eyes blessed be the art that can immortalize the art that baffles time's tyrannic claim to quench it here shines on me still the same faithful remembrancer of one so dear o oh, welcome guest 
though unexpected here who bidst me honour with an artless song affectionate a mother lost so long i will obey not willingly alone but gladly as the precept were her own and while that face renews my filial grief fancy shall weave a charm for my relief shall steep me in elysian reverie a momentary dream that thou art she my mother when i learned that thou wast dead say wast thou conscious of the tears i shed hovered thy spirit over thy sorrowing son wretch even then life's journey just begun perhaps thou gavest me though unfelt a kiss perhaps a tear if souls can weep in bliss ah that maternal smile it answers yes i heard the bell tolled on thy burial day i saw the hearse that bore thee slow away and turning from my nursery window drew a long long sigh and wept a last adieu but was it such it was where thou art gone adieus and farewells are a sound unknown may i but meet thee on that peaceful shore the parting word shall pass my lips no more thy maidens grieved themselves at my concern oft gave me promise of thy quick return what ardently i wished i long believed and disappointed still was still deceived by expectation every day beguiled dupe of to-morrow even from a child thus many a sad to-morrow came and went till all my stock of infant sorrows spent i learned at last submission to my lot but though i less deplored thee never forgot where once we dwelt our name is heard no more children not thine have trod my nursery floor and where the gardener robin day by day drew me to school along the public way delighted with my bauble coach and wrapped in scarlet mantle warm and velvet cap tis now become a history little known that once we called the pastoral house our own short-lived possession but the record fair that memory keeps of all thy kindness there still outlives many a storm that has effaced a thousand other themes less deeply traced thy nightly visits to my chamber made that thou mightst know me safe and warmly laid thy morning bounties ere i left my home the biscuit or confectionery plum the fragrant waters on my cheeks bestowed by thy own hand till fresh they shone and glowed all this and more endearing still than all thy constant flow of love that knew no fall never roughened by those cataracts and breaks that humour interposed too often makes all this still legible in memory's page and still to be so to my latest age adds joy to duty makes me glad to pay such honours to thee as my numbers may perhaps a frail memorial but sincere not scorned in heaven though little noticed here could time his flight reversed restore the hours when playing with thy vestious tissued flowers the violet the pink the jessamine i pricked them into paper with a pin and thou wast happier than myself the while wouldst softly speak and stroke my head and smile could those few pleasant days again appear might one wish bring them would i wish them here i would not trust my heart the dear delight seems so to be desired perhaps i might but no what here we call our life is such so little to be loved and thou so much that i should ill requite thee to constrain thy unbound spirit into bonds again thou as a gallant bark from albion's coast the storms all weathered and the ocean crossed shoots into port at some well-havened isle where spices breathe and brighter seasons smile there sits quiescent on the floods that show her beauteous form reflected clear below while airs impregnated with incense play around her fanning light her streamers gay so thou with sails how swift hast reached the shore where tempests never beat nor billows roar and thy loved consort on the dangerous tide of life long since has anchored by thy side but me scarce hoping to attain that rest always from port withheld 
always distressed me howling blasts drive devious tempest tossed sails ripped seams opening wide and compass lost and day by day some current's swarting force sets me more distant from a prosperous course yet oh the thought that thou art safe and he that thought is joy arrive what may to me my boast is not that i did use my birth from loins enthroned and rulers of the earth but higher far my proud pretensions rise the son of parents passed into the skies and now farewell time unrevoked has run his wonted course yet what i wished is done by contemplation's help not sought in vain i seem to have lived my childhood over again to have renewed the joys that once were mine without the sin of violating thine and while the wings of fancy still are free and i can view this mimic show of thee time has but half succeeded in his theft thyself removed thy power to soothe me left end of poem this recording is in the public domain i remember i remember by thomas hood from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by lian yao i remember i remember i remember i remember the house where i was born the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn he never came a wink too soon nor brought too long a day but now i often wish the night had borne my breath away i remember i remember the roses red and white the violets and the lily cups those flowers made of light the lilacs where the robin built and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday the tree is living yet i remember i remember when i was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing my spirit flew in feathers then that is so heavy now and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow i remember i remember the fir trees dark and high i used to think their slender tops were close against the sky it was a childish ignorance but now it is little joy to know i am farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Barefoot Boy by John Greenleaf Whittier From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama the barefoot boy blessings on thee little man barefoot boy with cheek of tan with thy turned-up pantaloons and thy merry whistled tunes with thy red lip redder still kissed by strawberries on the hill with the sunshine on thy face through thy torn brim's jaunty grace from my heart i give thee joy i was once a barefoot boy prince thou art the grown-up man only is republican let the million dollared ride barefoot trudging at his side thou hast more than he can buy in the reach of ear and eye outward sunshine inward joy blessings on thee barefoot boy oh for boyhood's painless play sleep that wakes in laughing day health that mocks the doctor's rules knowledge never learned of schools of the wild bee's morning chase of the wild flowers time and place flight of fowl and habitude of the tenants of the wood how the tortoise bears his shell how the woodchuck digs his cell and the ground mole sinks his well how the robin feeds her young how the oriole's nest is hung where the whitest lilies blow where the freshest berries grow where the ground nut trails its vine where the wood grapes clusters shine 
Of the black wasp's cunning way, Mason of his walls of clay, And the architectural plans Of great hornet artisans. For, eschewing books and tasks, Nature answers all he asks. Hand in hand with her he walks, Face to face with her he talks. Part and parcel of her joy, Blessings on the barefoot boy. Oh, for boyhood's time of June, Crowding years in one brief moon, When all things I heard or saw, Me their master waited for. I was rich in flowers and trees, Hummingbirds and honeybees. For my sport the squirrel played, Plied the snouted mole his spade, For my taste the blackberry cone Purpled over hedge and stone, Laughed the brook for my delight Through the day and through the night, Whispering at the garden wall, Talked with me from fall to fall, Mine the sand rim pickerel pond, Mine the walnut slopes beyond, Mine on bending orchard trees, Apples of Hesperides, Still as my horizon grew, Larger grew my riches too. All the world I saw or knew Seemed a complex Chinese toy, Fashioned for a barefoot boy. Oh, for festal dainties spread, Like my bowl of milk and bread, Pewter spoon and bowl of wood, On the doorstone gray and rude. O'er me like a regal tent, Cloudy ribbed the sunset bent, Purple curtained, fringed with gold, Looped in many a wind-swung fold, While for music came the play Of the pied frog's orchestra, And to light the noisy choir Lit the fly his lamp of fire. I was monarch, pomp and joy Waited on the barefoot boy. Cheerly, then, my little man, Live and laugh as boyhood can. Though the flinty slopes be hard, Stubble speared the new-morn sward, Every morn shall lead thee through Fresh baptisms of the dew. Every evening from thy feet Shall the cool wind kiss the heat All too soon these feet must hide In the prison cells of pride. Lose the freedom of the sod Like a colt's for work be shod. Make to tread the mills of toil up and down in ceaseless moil happy if their track be found never on forbidden ground happy if they sink not in quick and treacherous sands of sin ah that thou couldst know thy joy ere it passes barefoot boy john greenleaf whittier end of poem this poem is in the public domain Rain on the Roof by Coates Kinney From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Rain on the Roof When the humid shadows hover Over all the starry spheres And the melancholy darkness Gently weeps in rainy tears What a bliss to press the pillow Of a cottage chamber bed and to listen to the patter of the soft rain overhead. Every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart, and a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start, and a thousand recollections weave their earth threads into woof, as I listen to the patter of the rain upon the roof. Now in memory comes my mother, as she used in years agone, to regard the darling dreamers ere she left them till the dawn. Oh, I see her leaning o'er me, as I list to this refrain, which is played upon the shingles by the patter of the rain. Then my little seraph sister, with the wings and waving hair, and her star-eyed cherub brother, a serene angelic pair, glide around my wakeful pillow, with their praise or mild reproof, as I listen to the murmur of the soft rain on the roof. And another comes to thrill me with her eyes delicious blue. And I mind not, musing on her, that her heart was all untrue. I remember but to love her with a passion kin to pain, and my heart's quick pulses vibrate to 
to the patter of the rain. Art hath naught of tone or cadence that can work with such a spell in the soul's mysterious fountains whence the tears of rapture well as that melody of nature that subdued subduing strain which is played upon the shingles by the patter of the rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain whittling a national portrait by john pierpont from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter whittling a national portrait the yankee boy before he sent to school well knows the mysteries of that magic tool the pocket knife to that his wistful eye turns while he hears his mother's lullaby his hoarded sense he gladly gives to get it, then leaves no stone unturned till he can wet it. And in the education of the lad, no little part that implement hath had. His pocket knife to the young whittler brings a growing knowledge of material things. Projectiles, music, and the sculptor's art, his chestnut whistle and his shingle dart, his elder popgun with its hickory rod, its sharp explosion and rebounding wad his cornstalk fiddle and the deeper tone that murmurs from his pumpkin stalk trombone conspire to teach the boy to these succeed his bow his arrow of a feathered seed his windmill raise the passing breeze to win his water-wheel that turns upon a pin or if his father lives upon the shore you'll see his ship beam ends upon the floor full rigged with raking masts and timber staunch and waiting near the wash-tub for a launch thus by his genius and his jackknife driven ere long he'll solve you any problem given make any gimcrack musical or mute a plough a couch an organ or a flute make you a locomotive or a clock cut a canal or build a floating dock or lead forth beauty from a marble block make anything in short for sea or shore from a child's rattle to a seventy-four make it said i i when he undertakes it he'll make the thing and the machine that makes it and when the thing's made whether it be to move on earth in air or on the sea whether on water or the waves to glide or upon land to roll revolve or slide whether to whirl or jar to strike or ring whether it be a piston or a spring wheel pulley tube sonorous wood or brass the thing designed shall surely come to pass for when his hands upon it you may know that theirs go in it and he'll make it go end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old oaken bucket by samuel woodworth from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. The Old Oaken Bucket How dear to this heart are the scenes of my childhood, When fond recollections presents them to view, The orchard, the meadow, the deep tangled wildwood, And every loved spot which my infancy knew, The wide spreading pond and the mill which stood by it, the bridge and the rock where the cataract fell the cot of my father the dairy house nigh it and e'en the rude bucket which hung in the well the old oaken bucket the iron bound bucket the moss covered bucket which hung in the well that moss covered vessel i hail as a treasure for often at noon when returned from the field I found it the source of an exquisite pleasure, the purest and sweetest that nature can yield. How ardent I seized it with hands that were glowing, and quick to the white pebble bottom it fell. Then soon, with the emblem of truth overflowing and dripping with coolness, it rose from the well. The old oaken bucket, the iron-bound bucket, the moss-covered bucket arose from the well. 
how sweet from the green mossy brim to receive it as poised on the curb it inclined to my lips not a full blushing goblet could tempt me to leave it though filled with the nectar that jupiter sips and now far removed from that love situation the tear of regret will intrusively swell as fancy reverts to my father's plantation and sighs for the bucket which hangs in the well the old oaken bucket the iron bound bucket the moss covered bucket which hangs in the well end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old armchair by eliza cook from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for LibriVox.org by lian yao the old armchair i love it i love it and who shall dare to chide me for loving that old armchair i treasured it long as a sainted prize i've bedewed it with tears i've embalmed it with sighs tis bound by a thousand bands to my heart not a tie will break not a link will start would you know the spell a mother sat there and a sacred thing is that old armchair in childhood's hour i lingered near the hallowed seat with listening ear and gentle words that mother would give to fit me to die and teach me to live she told me that shame would never betide with truth for my creed and god for my guide she taught me to lisp my earliest prayer as i knelt beside that old armchair i sat and watched her many a day when her eye grew dim and her locks were grey and i almost worshipped her when she smiled and turned from her bible to bless her child years rolled on but the last one sped my idol was shattered my earth star fled i learned how much the heart can bear when i saw her die in that old armchair tis past tis past but i gaze on it now with quivering breath and throbbing brow twas there she nursed me twas there she died and memory flows with lava tide say it is folly and deem me weak whilst scalding drops start down my cheek but i love it i love it and cannot tear my soul from a mother's old armchair End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Woodman, Spare That Tree by George Pope Morris From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Woodman, Spare That Tree Woodman, Spare That Tree, Touch Not a Single Bough in youth it sheltered me and i'll protect it now twas my forefather's hand that placed it near his cot there woodman let it stand thy axe shall harm it not that old familiar tree whose glory and renown are spread over land and sea and wouldst thou hew it down woodman forbear thy stroke cut not its earth-bound ties oh spare that aged oak now towering to the skies when but an idle boy i sought its grateful shade in all their gushing joy here too my sisters played my mother kissed me here my father pressed my hand forgive this foolish tear but let that old oak stand my heart-strings round thee cling close as thy bark old friend here shall the wild bird sing and still thy branches bend old tree the storm still brave and woodman leave the spot while i've a hand to save thy axe shall hurt it not end of poem this recording is in the public domain a parable by matilde blind from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. A Parable 
between the sand hills and the sea a narrow strip of silver sand whereon a little maid doth stand who picks up shells continually between the sand hills and the sea far as her wandering eyes can reach a vastness heaving grey and grey to the frayed edges of the day furls his red standard on the breach between the skyline and the beach the waters of the flowing tide cast up the sea pink shells and weed she toys with shells and doth not heed the ocean which on every side is closing round her vast and wide it creeps her way as if in play pink shells at her pink feet to cast but now the wild waves hold her fast and bear her off and melt away a vastness heaving grey in grey end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Piper by William Blake From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the Piper And Thomas Peter as the Child The Piper Piping down the valleys wild, Piping songs of pleasant glee, On a cloud I saw a child, And he laughing said to me, pipe a song about a lamb so i piped with merry cheer piper pipe that song again so i piped he wept to hear drop thy pipe thy happy pipe sing thy songs of happy cheer so i sung the same again while he wept with joy to hear piper sit thee down and write in a book that all may read so he vanished from my sight and i plucked a hollow reed and i made a rural pen and i stained the water clear and i wrote my happy songs every child may joy to hear end of poem this recording is in the public domain choosing a name by mary lamb from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one read for librivox dot org by sonia choosing a name i have got a new-born sister i was nigh the first that kissed her when the nursing woman brought her to papa his infant daughter how papa's dear eyes did glisten she will shortly be to christen and papa has made the offer i shall have the naming of her now i wonder what would please her charlotte julia or louisa anne and mary they're too common joan's too formal for a woman jane's a prettier name beside but we had a jane that died they would say if twas rebecca that she was a little quaker edith's pretty but that looks better in old english books ellen's left off long ago blanche is out of fashion now none that i have named as yet are so good as margaret emily is neat and fine what do you think of caroline how i'm puzzled and perplexed what to choose or think of next i am in a little fever lest the name that i should give her should disgrace her or defame her i will leave papa to name her end of poem this recording is in the public domain What Does Little Birdie Say? From Sea Dreams by Alfred Lord Tennyson From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao What Does Little Birdie Say? What does Little Birdie say in her nest at peep of day? Let me fly, says Little Birdie. Mother, let me fly away. Birdie, rest a little longer, till the little wings are stronger. So she rests a little longer, then she flies away. What does little baby say 
in her bed at peep of day baby says like little birdie let me rise and fly away baby sleep a little longer till the little limbs are stronger if she sleeps a little longer baby too shall fly away end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Cradle Hymn by Isaac Watts From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter A Cradle Hymn Abbreviated from the original Hush, my dear, lie still and slumber Holy angels guard thy bed Heavenly blessings without number Gently falling on thy head Sleep, my babe, thy food and raiment House and home thy friends provide All without thy care or payment all thy wants are well supplied how much better thou art attended than the son of god could be when from heaven he descended and became a child like soft and easy is thy cradle coarse and hard thy saviour lay when his birthplace was a stable and his softest bed was hay see the kind of shepherds round him telling wonders from the sky there they sought him there they found him with his virgin mother by see the lovely babe addressing lovely infant how he smiled when he wept the mother's blessing soothed and hushed the holy child lo he slumbers in his manger where the horned oxen feed peace my darling here's no danger here's no oxen near thy bed mayst thou live to know and fear him trust and love him all thy days then go dwell forever near him see his face and sing his praise i could give thee thousand kisses hoping what i most desire not a mother's fondest wishes can to greater joy Aspire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Go Sleep, Ma Honey by Edward D. Barker. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1. Home and Friendship, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Go Sleep, Ma Honey. Whip will singin' to the moon, 
go sleep my honey you sing a powerful mournful tune go sleep my honey the day bird sleeping on his nest he knew it time to take a rest and he go on to do his level best go sleep my honey old banjos laid away go sleep my honey it's picking through for today go sleep my honey the night i'm surely come to pass the crickets chirping in the grass and the old mules gone to sleep at last go sleep my honey i hear the night wind in the corn go sleep my honey days a ghost out there shows you're born go sleep my honey but he doesn't come where we keep a light and the candles burning all the night so sing to rest there's be all right go sleep my honey end of poem this recording is in the public domain no baby in the house by clara g dolliver from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part one Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama No Baby in the House No baby in the house I know, Tis far too nice and clean, No toys by careless fingers strewn Upon the floors are seen, No finger marks are on the panes, No scratches on the chairs, No wooden men set up in rows Or marshalled off in pairs no little stockings to be darned all ragged at the toes no pile of mending to be done made up of baby clothes no little troubles to be soothed no little hands to fold no grimy fingers to be washed no stories to be told no tender kisses to be given no nicknames dove and mouse no merry frolics after tea no baby in the house clara g dolliver end of poem this recording is in the public domain